Welcome to Southgate. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, if you are joining in with us today, that you are connected with a local church. Uh, we hope and we pray that if you're in the North Grenville area, that you are connected to Southgate in a physical way, that you are coming out to services and you are joining in on the events that are happening in person. And if you're wondering how you can get connected to some of those things, uh, we would just say that you could sign up for the email uh, that uh, goes out weekly as well. You can follow us on our socials and uh, check in on the website to see what is going on in person and in our community. And so uh, we want you to be connected in that way. And uh, if you want to participate in what we are doing by giving financially, that will be up on the screen. We hope and we pray that this service is a benefit to you and your walk with Jesus. Okay, so we are on week two of this series, Transmit, Dialing into Conversations with God. And last week at the beginning of the teaching, we had a radio up here. And so we found out that there are there's programming happening on the radio. You, you take the dial and you turn to different stations and depending on what station it is, it might be talk radio or it might be country music or it might be rap or pop music or Christian music, whatever it is. And you, and you have static in between there, right? And so it's like, and then you tune it into something else and then you hear crystal clear, loud and clear what's going on. But we, we, we also talked about that those programs, they don't start the moment we tune into them. They've, they've already been happening. And so there are, there's programming that is taking place all the time and we happen to tune into it when we turn the dial. And we really talked about that as it relates to our prayer life. And so uh, how we pray, how we, how we connect with God, how we, how we talk to God, how we transmit our, our requests, our conversations over to him and understanding that we can join the conversation that is already in progress. And so when you pray, when you talk to God, when you open, when you dial into this, I want you to know that there are, there are angels who are already doing work on your behalf. There are, there are principalities taking place. There's, there, there's a spiritual realm that is far beyond the things that we understand or know. And there's conversations that are happening about you specifically. They're happening about you, and they're happening about your life, they're talking about your purpose, they're talking about your conversations, how you are choosing what you choose to do, and how you choose to live, and how you choose to talk, and spend your time, and your money, and all these different kinds of things. They're, they're conversations that are already taking place about you. And it's also about what God has planned for you. His plan, the, the, the mission, the purpose of your life in why you are here and what the Holy Spirit wants to do through you. And so imagine you, you're tuning into that radio, you are, you're turning the dial and, and you, 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 you hear a station, you pick up the station and, and in the midst of that you hear the spirit of fear that screams at you is a liar. And it, it immediately just, just penetrates your mind and your heart and your soul and you take that in and then, and then you turn the dial a little bit more and you hear this, I've beaten and I've crushed those lies. And you turn the dial a little bit more and, and you listen in to what is taking place and you hear this, they have no authority to harm you. And imagine if you could hear those, those truths, those declarations. Imagine if you could tune in to the conversation that is already taking place. Because what I know is true, at least in my life, is that, is that Satan, he is trying to spew hate. He's trying to spew lies. He's trying to kick me and then kick me when I'm down. He is taking the things of my past and throwing them in my face. He's doing all that he possibly can to derail my conversations with God and to, to, to derail my, my purpose and my mission and what God has for me. And so Jesus, your, your advocate, is, is speaking truth to you. And why is this important? 
Because when you know what God is doing on your behalf, it changes the way that you pray and it changes the way that you live. And so that was really last week. That's, that's kind of what we talked about. And, and today we're going to, to look at how to apply that, the, the, the things that we are hearing, the conversations that are taking place. How do we apply that into our lives? Now, the, the point that we wanted to make last week is this, and it's number one here for today. Prayer is simply joining the conversation that is already taking place in the spiritual world. There's a conversation that's taking place Prayer is joining that conversation. It's dialing into that conversation that is already happening. But we're going to piggyback on that. And so number two here today is this. I want you, I want us to declare, to announce or proclaim agreement with the conversation. So to declare agreement with the conversations that already happened, the, the truth that is being, that is being uh, talked about and, and declare those things and be in agreement with those things in our lives. See, oftentimes I, I wake up in the morning and maybe you do too and, and, and I start thinking about, I start recounting all the things that I am not. Maybe I, I, I start in the wrong direction and, and I think about the things that I haven't accomplished or I haven't done or that I'm terrible or that I don't deserve what I do or I'm not capable enough to do what I do. And you, 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 it feels like, you know what, you might as well quit because you're, you're good for nothing and it's, going to, it's not going to go well for you or that deal is going to fall through or your kids are going to fail their class or, or whatever it is, you're never going to get out of debt or your finances or, or what. Whatever, and that's what the devil does. As soon as you wake up in the morning, you start with all that garbage, all that junk, and he spews it out and he tries to make you believe it. And if you believe it, then you will be like, well, what is the point in even praying? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm decimated anyways. I don't feel like I can accomplish what God wants me to because I'm not good enough and I'm not, I'm not good looking enough and I don't have enough money and I don't have enough time and I, whatever it is. And you feel like, what's the point of even pursuing this relationship? Or what's the point of even praying? And you know what happens is we start walking in fear. And we walk in fear throughout life and anxiety creeps in in our life because we start to believe the lies. And stress creeps in in our life because we don't feel like we can accomplish the things that, that, that God has set out for us. And we live our lives on eggshells out of fear of the unknown, out of our lack of accomplishment or, 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 or out of our, our lack of being able to do things. And, and God says, you know what, listen, listen to the conversation. Instead of waking up and believing the lies and living your life in fear, God says, why don't right away, as soon as you wake up, dial into the conversation, listen to the conversation that we are having and declare those truths. The truth is, is that you are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings. That is the truth of the matter. Imagine starting with that as your perspective every single morning when you wake up. The truth of the matter is that you have a purpose in this life. You are made specifically you are made lovely. You are made beautifully. You have a purpose and a mission to accomplish right here on earth. That, that's the truth of the matter. Imagine waking up. Is that, that your mindset? All right? Or, or, or what about this? The truth is, is that with God, anything is possible. Even the hardest task. Even the hardest thing, even the hardest mission, it's all possible with God. That's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is this. You are forgiven. Whatever you've done in the past, whatever it was, you're forgiven of that. It's gone. It's, it's, it's thrown into the sea of uh, forgetfulness. It's, it's just gone. It's, it's, it's wiped clean. Your slate is clean. Imagine waking up like that every morning. The truth of the matter is remember your sins are no more. That Jesus has paid for those things. The transaction is complete, right? The truth is, is that he's already blessed you with everything you need to accomplish his purpose in your life. The truth is, is that he is the prince of peace when you are dealing with anxiety in the middle of the night. Well, when you don't know how to, how to, how to go through the, the right door, which doors are open or closed or the unknown, the truth is, is that he is your peace. The, the, the truth is, is that, is that he wants you to declare these things. 
Announce them in agreement as soon as you wake up. No, I'm not terrible, Satan. Here's why. Because I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. Yeah, Satan, you have no power over me because I'm a son or I'm a daughter of the king of kings. And you wake up like that and you live it out in your life every single day. And if need be, every hour of the day, you continue to declare, to announce, to proclaim agreement with God about the conversations that are already taking place. See, if you're walking in fear, and then that's all you're doing, your prayers, you're not going to hear an answer to your prayers. If you continually, all you're doing is, is literally just parroting Satan. Yes, I am weak. Yes, yes, I, I can't accomplish these things. Yes, I'm never going to amount to whatever. No, I don't have any purpose in my life. Oh, yes, it's too stressful for me, so I'm going to stay at home. Or whatever it is, you're, you're literally, this is what Satan wants for you. You are parroting him. You're, you're, you're doing what he wants, right? God is saying, I want to use you. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth, looking to show himself strong on behalf of someone who is loyal. He is, he is going, looking for people who are trustworthy, who are loyal. Note, it, 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 it doesn't matter if you're, you're white or you're black or you're Asian or, 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 or you're Hispanic. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. It doesn't matter if you are, are wealthy or not. It, it, not None of this matters. He is looking for people who are loyal and trustworthy because he wants to show himself through those people. I, I, I love that. And so declare it. In fact, we can find this in Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is alive and active. It's, it's living. These are his words. The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That's powerful. It, that, that's power. Living and active. And, and he's saying, declare this. My words not your own. Because sometimes, if I'm honest, my, my words when I declare things or when, I, when I'm in my prayer life, it's like I'm taking this double-edged sword. My kids, they love, um, what are they called? Shirley Temples. My kids love to order Shirley Temples, especially at Swiss Chalet. And you know, Shirley Temples, you get these little swords, right? These little plastic swords, and they put the cherry on it. And so my kids love that, and then they're like, ching, 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 ching. They're like, like playing uh, swords in the car or whatever, and uh, eventually someone gets hurt, right? But anyway, th like, this is, this is the deal, right? I'm, 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 this is my thoughts. I'm trying to declare. I'm trying to work my way through this. But listen, these are not your words. God's word. And he's saying, declare my word. Not your own word. Declare my truth. This is what truth is. And when you do that, you are no longer fighting and splitting hairs with this kind of thing, you are taking this kind of sword. This is God's word. It's living and act. Declare it. Announce it. Agree with it. And say goodbye to your own stuff, right? Use this thing. And it says it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And so he's saying, take this out of the sheath. Use this. And it doesn't have to be yours. It, it, it's my word. It's, it's my truth. It's not your opinion. It's God's. And so let's break that down a little bit. Here, here's what God's word does. God's word accomplishes God's purpose. His word accomplishes his purpose. Right? Isaiah 55.10 reads like this. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven... And do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. When it comes out, the word of God, it does not come back void because God's word has purpose. Whenever it's spoken, whenever it's declared, whenever it's announced in agreement, it's his word. It doesn't come back empty. It has purpose in it. It, it literally, as you speak it, it has purpose. And God's word gives life. Because the second thing I just kind of noticed out of there, it gives life. 
And not only does it accomplish God's purpose, when you speak it, it gives life. John 6, 63, it reads like this. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. And you can speak God's word and it brings life. It, life is attached to it. If there's no, God's, without God's word, it's, it's just death. And it speaks life. It, you can speak life into people. Isn't that amazing when you do that? At Brayson's hockey game last night, we were over in Mooresburg. And at the end of the game, one of the kids, uh, he was out in the, in the uh, they had a great game. He was out in the parking lot. And I just went up to him. It was just him and I as he was walking to, to, to his parents' car. And I just put my hand on his shoulder. And I was like, you know what, dude? I was really proud of you. You led the team well tonight. And he just, it's almost like he didn't know what to do with that. And even just the smallest, the smallest little morsel of truth brings life. God's word, when you speak it, it gives life. And you can, you can kind of penetrate into the darkness. You can counter culture this crazy world when you speak truth and life over other people. Not even just with yourself. You can speak it over other people. And, and listen to those words. Because God's word creates. It, it, it creates. It accomplishes God's purpose. God's word gives life and God's word creates. Every time you speak God's truth and God's word, it creates something. It creates an impression. It creates life. It creates purpose. It clarifies. It defines. It creates. And you can speak death or you can speak life to people. You can let the words out of your mouth be life-giving or, 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 or kill people with your words. It leaves an impression when you speak it. Which leads us to our third point here today. Listen. Listen to the small, still voice of God in your heart. Listen to the small, still voice of God in your heart. While you're praying, you are listening. While you are praying, you are listening to the conversation that is already taking place. If you are one of his sheep, God says, you hear the shepherd. You, you are listening. His sheep listen to him. And so listen to what he says. Listen to what he's speaking. Listen to what he's saying. And you can hear him. I mean, you can hear podcasts. You can hear self-help books. You can hear uh, 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 whatever it is, articles and, and stuff. You can hear God. If you can hear those things, you can hear God. And, and, and sometimes you just need to be quiet and listen. It might not come in like a complete sentence. It might not come in, in some audible voice. It might come in different ways, different forms. But listen, because God speaks. He does. 1 Kings 19, 11 and tw uh, to 12. Elijah's been told to go into the rocks to hear the voice of God. And we pick it up here. It says, The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart, shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper whisper. See, sometimes what this sounds like is like God is your conscience here. And, and something's going on in your mind and, 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 and you're, you're, you're about to, you're in the lobby after church and, and you're just drawn to someone. You're like, you know what? I feel like, I feel like maybe I should be going to talk to them or, or praying for them. Nah, nah, I'm just, I got to get to lunch or my kids are waiting for me. I'm not going to or, or, hey, I, I feel like I should be blessing that person or, or my neighbor or ask them if they need help. No, that would be too hard. It's embarrassing doing that. And God is, is speaking, but sometimes we are ignoring it. And he's sharing, and sometimes our, our worlds, our lives are so loud that we are not hearing it. And you say, well, why doesn't God just yell? Why doesn't he just yell at me? Well, let's, let's just put it this perspective. Okay, imagine, imagine I am God, all right? It's very hard to imagine. But imagine I am God, all right? And then this, this is the universe, this is all the universe, everything all created, everything all created. This is the universe. And then this little pin is, is, is our solar system. 
All right, this little pin is our solar system. In the universe, it's not up to spec, okay? I'm just saying. And then, and then even in that solar system, our Earth is in, in that pin. And then in that Earth is, is you. Is you. Imagine me yelling to, to the spec, on the spec, on the pin, in our universe. Instead, God speaks in a still, small voice. And he comes up. And he speaks truth and life. Listen, you are better than you think you are. Listen with me, all things are possible. We can accomplish so much together. You are beautiful and wonderfully made. Don't listen and live in fear. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. And he speaks, but you gotta listen. James 3:17. It says this, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissful, uh, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And so he's speaking these truths, which really leads us to this final point here, number four. Make a request that is consistent with your declarations and the voice of God. Spend some time declaring, listening to God, agreeing with God, because chances are when you do that, when you listen to God, when you when you quiet your heart and mind and you listen to the still small voice of God, chances are God has already given you what you've asked for. If they're consistent, if the request that is consistent with the declarations of the truth of God's word and the voice of God, chances are He's already given you exactly what you're asking for. Maybe even better. (laughs) See, you need to walk in truth, not fear. Truth, not a lie. Truth, not perception. The more you walk in truth, the more you begin to see the blessings that God has already given you. And so as we declare this, I just, I have this uh, this very simple form. And if you want, you can take a picture of this and write it down. Maybe if you journal or if you uh, take notes or or whatever, you can write this down. And this just will kind of help us to define space and time set apart. And so here's what I want you to do. I have uh, six different questions that you need to ask yourself. And so what is the desired discipline that you want to establish here? Maybe it's, it's prayer, maybe it's declaring, maybe it's tuning in, maybe it's listening, maybe it's fasting. What, what, what is it that you want to do here? What's the discipline that you want to establish? What is a stronghold in your life that you would like to break? What is that? Write it down. Something that you know that you need to break. You feel guilty, you feel convicted, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you because that's why you feel that way. Write it down. What is a place that you are going to do this? Make sure you have a Bible, a pen, and and paper there, right? I don't think the phone is the best because odds are you're going to have a notification. Something's going to come up. You're going to get sidetracked. You're going to check your email. You're going to go on socials. Just do it old school, all right? Bible, pen, paper. Find a place. Make sure those are there and do it consistently. Number four, time of day. Is it better in the morning? Are you a little grumpy? Can you do it at night? Can you do it during lunch hour? When when can you add this time into your schedule? What is the length? Doesn't need to be all day. Doesn't even need to be an hour. It could be five minutes. Could be 10 minutes. What is the time? What is the length of time? So that you know, yeah, I can do that. 100% I can do that. And then finally, as we lead into Easter here, who are some people that you know that you could invite to Easter? This is our church. This is not my church, right? But who, who, who would you like to write down there? Just three people. And, and can, you, can you consistently be praying for those people? Declaring truth over them, speaking life to them, and then inviting them to hear the gospel and the good news of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Uh, so much for uh, the, the truth that you've already given us, God. And uh, I, I, am, I am definitely guilty of not um, proclaiming and announcing the truth that you, 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 you've kind of presented in my life, the truth of your word, God, and speaking life over death. 
And God, I just, I just want to be more bold with that, Father. I, I need more of you in my life. And I, I know that there are people who, who, who relate with that here. And so, God, I'm just praying that you would, you would do something just, just amazing and miraculous in the life of our church as we, as we declare the truth that you've given us in your word, God, that as we speak life and as we speak life over death that Satan tries to infiltrate us with. And so give us strength, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen.